Every morning about 6 a.m., I get a ping on my phone, and it's from one of the news apps that I uh, subscribe to, telling me these are the five facts you need to start your day. So I look at them and decide whether I'm going to get up or not. <laughs> and sometimes throughout the day, especially when there's been an important speech by some important person, whether it's the president or President Zelensky in, in uh, Ukraine or Vladimir Putin, you'll say five takeaways from this famous speech, you know, whatever. So I'm going to take five facts or five takeaways, if you will, from the gospel this morning. First of all, the transfiguration is a major event in the life of Jesus. I would say after the resurrection, it was the number two event in his entire public ministry. Three gospels record the transfiguration, the gospel of Matthew and Mark and Luke. And in the second letter of Peter, he talks about the transfiguration. We celebrate this feast twice every year, always on the second Sunday of Lent, year after year. Second Sunday of Lent is always transfiguration. And August 6th is the Feast of Transfiguration. And even if August 6th falls on a Sunday, it replaces the ordinary time Sunday, and we celebrate transfiguration. So a major moment in the life of Christ. So the first takeaway, Jesus took the apostles up a high mountain by themselves. We need every once in a while to get off by ourselves or ourselves, with your family or close friends, just to get away from the busy life we live. Whether it's going to school or work or running a family or a business or whatever it is, we need to get away. Now, one way to get away, of course, is vacation. Vacations are just that. But during Lent, I challenge you to try to get away. There's still 35 days until Easter to try to get away somewhere. Now, last Sunday, we heard that Jesus went out to the desert. This Sunday, we went up the mountain. We have both of them right here. Jesus could have lived in Las Vegas, for all we know. <laughs> so you can go out to the desert as close as Red Rock, you know, what, the 20-minute drive from here or less. The mountains, Mount Charleston, beautifully capped with snow. Get away. But if you can't do that, if you just can't travel, go to your backyard, go to a quiet room. Get away. Turn off all the noise. Just get away and be with the Lord. Spend some quiet time with the Lord. Again, by yourself, with your spouse, with your family, whatever. Slow down. Take a Lenten break. Spend some time away, quietly, talking to the Lord, letting the Lord talk to you. And the second takeaway is that you do need spiritual friends, spiritual partners. I hope that for many of you is your own spouse. That you can talk about spiritual things together. Maybe other friends, maybe people in the Bible study, maybe, you know, friends that you have some common denominator with. Coming to church here on Saturday or Sunday, this is a community, a community of thousands of people here in the course of a Sunday. It may be someone who is not really alive, but a famous saint. Maybe your prayer partner is the autobiography of Teresa of Lisieux, or the Confessions of St. Augustine, or the writings of Richard Rohr, or James Martin, or whatever. So find spiritual friends, either in literature or real live people that you can share your faith with. It's important to be in fellowship, in contact with others. The third takeaway is to believe without any shadow of a doubt that there is life after life. When the disciples saw Jesus up until that point in some distance, another man looked like every other human being, looked like a Jewish man, you know, uh, whatever. Now they saw him in his divinity. They realized that this was more than a man from Nazareth. This was the son of God. Then they saw Moses and Elijah. Well, Moses and Elijah had died hundreds of years ago, but now they saw them alive. So they had to believe there really is life after life. So believe in the resurrection. There is life after life, especially for those of uh, you who have lost family members or friends. Believe that they live on. They live with God in eternity. We must believe in that. We say that in the creed. I believe in the resurrection. Transfiguration is proof. There is life after life. Moses and Elijah, long dead in the world, but alive forever in the kingdom of God. The fourth takeaway is listen to Jesus. God the Father went out of his way to come down and say, I've got a challenge for you. Listen to my son. Listen to him. How do we listen to him? Read the scripture, especially any of the four gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, or John. Listen to Jesus. Listen to Jesus in prayer. You've heard me say this often. When you pray, say, I got 20 minutes to pray before I go off to work. 
Talk to God for 10 minutes and then be silent for 10 minutes. Just be quiet, be still, and know that I am God. And during that quiet time, God will talk to you. Maybe not in your ears, but in your heart. Listen to the Lord. Listen to him. Other ways of listening to him, again, is through friends. Friends who might give you good advice. Sometimes we need to go to a friend, whether it's a priest or a spiritual director or a confessor or a person that you think really knows the Lord. Talk to that person. God is speaking through that person directly to you. So many ways to listen to Jesus. And the fifth and last takeaway is you have to go down the mountain. In other words, you have to get on with your work. And maybe you've had some mountaintop experience like Peter, James, and John. It could have been a retreat. It could have been a revival. It could have been some special event in your life. And you just want them to stay there. Like Peter said, let's just build three tents here and let's just live here. No, Jesus said, we have to go down the mountain and you have to tell this to everyone, he said, after the resurrection. Well, my friends, it is after the resurrection like 2,000 years later. So it's okay for you to talk about Jesus now. All right? You can do it. I've been told that Catholics are the least evangelical of all Christian communities. Mormons go door to door on bicycles. Jehovah's Witness knock on door and hand us watchtower. We Catholics keep our faith to ourselves. You are charged to leave the mountain, in other words, to leave this church and share your faith story with others. You can do that literally as I'm talking to you this morning but also by your example. Example is the best teacher. Do people see you as a forgiving person, as a loving person, as a caring person, as one goes out to the neighborhood and helps someone in trouble, welcomes newcomers, neighborhood, whatever. We need to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ by our words and actions. So those are the takeaways from the transfiguration. And what will happen if we follow some of those or all of those? We too will be transformed transformed into better versions of ourselves, more Christ-like than when this Lenten season began. How important that is. Lent is a time for change, conversion, renewal, transfiguration, transformation.